Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 33 bringing you a replay of an exhibition match between Electro and Perlox on Overgrown Citadel. This is a map we haven't seen a lot of recently. It's a very small map, and most of the maps we've been playing recently have been considerably larger, about four times larger. So it'll be interesting to go back to this old map that back in the days when maps were still made to be fairly small. So, so far, Electro has decided to go for CISO. Perlox, we do not see what he's going for yet because Electro has paused this point. So, Perlox is going for Grekum. So it's Cesar versus Grekum, and like I said, this map is quite small, as can be quite obviously seen. It's got... Let's see, it's got 5 LC and 4 QP in the main. It has expansions with 5 LC and 6 QP at the north and the south. The middle has 8 QP in it, and there's also expansions at the top right and the bottom left, which have far less QP. And it's interesting to look at it and see how much more Q plasma is in these mains and these bases compared to more recent maps. I mean, admittedly, these bases were meant to be kind of shared, so both players would end up kind of fighting for them, but having three QP crates themselves. But with the current playstyle, it's more likely that, and not even back then, more likely that people just get a whole base to themselves. Anyway, special, the Special Ops has seen the Arcticus coming in from Perlox, and Perlox is, of course, going for a standard economic start. Electro is going for... I shouldn't, I shouldn't say of course, actually, because this is a small map, Rushing is going to be a lot more useful than it would be on the larger maps that have been played more recently. So, Electro is, or was going for Importer. Here, right, there's the Importer building. So, Electro is going for 6LC with an Importer, and Perlox is going, and he's still going for Economy. He's not building any Rush-based units yet. He's not building any tech either, so he's definitely going for this, or actually, he's building a Seppi now for the Reef, so he is... Still building a fair amount of economy, but this is about the tech time I would expect. About 2 minutes, 30 seconds for a reef to come up. That's roughly what I would expect. And the Arcticus is coming over. It is going to be able to... Well, it's going to try to land inside Electro's base. It won't be able to because the importer will be there. It will stop it. Eventually, once the screen time wave comes, I should say. Once the screen time wave comes up, it'll come over. Electro does... Does stop bothering to attack the Arcticus. He is going for the Triad now. Actually, going for the RPs now. But getting distracted by one of the Octus coming to build an RP, so Special Ops is harassing the base directly. Perlox has not jumped back to figure out what's going on yet. And Perlox actually is in a good position. He could actually send the Arcticus to a place where it will land. And Perlox, now he's jumped back, so he, he does know about the Special Ops coming in. He is sending an Octo to take care of that Special Ops. Though, of course, Perlox has managed to actually get through him and defeat him by, well, by some point in the future. By about, let's see, by 42 mark, yeah, he's... Apparently one around here, but of course this will all change, that's going on in the far future. So Perlox is threatened, but he's certainly not in a terribly bad spot, he just needs to make sure to kill off the Special Ops, which he is doing right now. So Perlox, Arctic is still moving towards Electro's base, Electro getting a factor for himself about two minutes in, and now oh, Special Ops is dead, it's about two minute mark, so he's jumping back, probably to see if he can retreat with Special Ops aboard the entire attack. But it's hard to tell, it looks like he is... No, he is not. He is aborting the attack. He's going towards this expansion instead. We'll see that. He has jumped away, however, so Perlox will not see it until another time has gone by, which is going to be near the unplayable past. So Perlox, as at the 210 mark, is continuing to build up his economy. He's now getting a Seppi a bit later than he was before, but he's still getting it. So he will be able to get up his reef fairly quickly. It's about, at this point, it'll be about the three-minute mark before he's able to get any technologies going, but... It's still at least going to be something. It's, like I said, not as fast. Special Ops did slow it down, and now the top blue time wave has come along and has removed the damage on the timeline. So, Perlox now has not been attacked at all, except for, of course, this Arcticus getting into the main base and taking damage, which is now going to be sitting down right next to the expansion that, Perlo that Electro has taken. Perlox will be able to see that's happened as well. Though it will take a while to actually happen. ATC coming in for Electro. This is the first vehicle that's coming into play. The ATC will... Be damaging this quite a bit. I think the Arcticus will be able to get away in time, but the important thing is to know that an ATC does... ...does make sure to get rid of the... Or, sorry, does make sure to be known. If Perlox knows an ATC, he will be able to prepare for it, that's what I was trying to say. Perlox has also gotten advanced structures. He will be able to get air units whenever he wants. Electro is about half a minute behind him. He's got two ATHCs, and he is not building any of those right now, but I'm sure he will be very soon. He doesn't have any reserves to do so, mind you. That's his main bottle lock in the moment. He's about 20 seconds away from the next reserve, and that's what's slowing him down right now. So he does have two ATHCs, which are still powerful units, they're still forces to be reckoned with. 
if your opponent doesn't have cloak detection, and because Arcticuses are the early cloak detection for Grekim, and the fact that it's all the way over here, and very close to getting destroyed, it's almost a... Well, it's 40% health now. So because of that, it's really hard... It's going to be hard for Perlox to actually stop these... Stop these ATHCs from coming in, unless he gets his area and soon gets semi-pods or gets Faros, which he's... And he's doing neither of those things. He is getting Gate Tech, or sorry, Chronoporting. He's getting Chronoporting very early. He's getting it at the 431 mark. And Electro is going for... No, he's continuing to try to attack the Arcticus. He is not attacking the main base, which... Like I said before, the Arcticus is the main cloak protection, although at this point it's totally out of position. He should just attack the main base. It wouldn't be a problem. Though it would be a little bit risky. It would give Perlox some options, but Perlox, like I said, is going for Chronoporting, so... He has a huge amount of options. Probably going to go for Faro Pod Chrono Rush, the classic strategy. And building another Arcticus in his main base with a Faro that will be able to protect him from any cloakiness come in. And here are the Faro Pods. The Faro Pods will be, like I said, li very likely Chrono ported back. Faro Pod Chrono Rush was an incredibly popular strategy back in the Alpha and Beta. It stopped being popular around the time that, well, basically, Chrono porting cost was increased and the cost of Chrono Port units was made on a per unit basis to help nerf this. But also, as the size of maps increases, it becomes less powerful. So in a small map like this, it can be very powerful. On a larger map like Cordoba or or Mantanier or Twilight, it becomes a lot harder to actually pull off properly. Or at least a lot harder to pull off without doing some tricks like moving your triad towards your opponent's base first. And even then, it's still kind of tricky to pull off. Anyway, the ATHCs have come in at the... Looks like they're coming in at the 5-minute mark. While well, Prolog is at the 644 mark, building up a bunch of Octopods as well, interestingly enough. He is not actually building up Faropods, he's going purely for Octopods. I guess he wanted to have more QP to use for Chronoporting. Which is not a bad idea. So he will be able to Chronoport these back. Electro's ATHCs are here, but they will be attacked by the... While well, all the units coming in, the Octopods and Faro's coming in from the future. So that will be happening very soon, I'm sure. Perlox has Chronoported them back. The arrival has landed right into the Unplayable Pass, too. So... This is a little bit too far behind for the attack, but the arrival is still here in time. There will be an, so Electro has to worry about this. He's now seeing the damage happening in the past. The Octopod's coming in and intercepting his ATHCs before they're able, even able to get out. He does cloak one of the ATHCs. Actually, cloaks both the ATHCs. So the Octopods cannot do anything about them. Not sure where the Faros are because Perlux does need to send those Faros back. Those are absolutely necessary for cloak detection. But it looks like the Octopods are simply ignoring it. Anything that's going on is at the five-minute mark now, right now. The Octopods simply ignoring the ATHC, he's going straight for the base, attacking the factory directly as it's being produced. I don't think they'll be able to destroy it in time, but it will at least be able to slow it down a bit. The Faros weren't, like I said, they weren't chronoported back, which is kind of bizarre. I really expected they would be. However, it doesn't matter, the Faros are still able to destroy the ATHCs, one of them being weakened, the other one, well, still there, being heavily damaged by the Faro. And Perlox is doing another chronoport right now. Probably chronoporting back these Faros, but. Yes, he is chronoporting back the Faros, and there's also, let's see, so the Octopod's right back here, so that was about the 4 minute mark they're at. Electro is at the 546 mark, we see that he's taking a lot of damage in the future, but of course none of that's guaranteed since it is in the future. But now the Octopods at the 449 mark in this iteration have managed to get through the Faro, the ATHCs, so I don't think the Faro was sent back, but it does look like the ATHCs have decided to pull back and attack the Octopods instead of trying to go for the main base. So Perlox's base is completely un unassaulted right now. It's completely unharassed. It's totally op it's open, but it's not particularly not a particularly important target for Electro right now. Electro is more focused on stopping his own base from being destroyed, which may not be a bad idea, though it does mean that Electro just has more to deal with once Perlox gets more units up and Chronoports them back. Electro's going to just have more and more to deal with from the future, and Electro is. Double check and see what's going on. His ATHCs actually are able to survive, but it looks like ultimately they will... They will be able to attack the Octopods. One of the ATHCs that died that last iteration is still alive, so both ATHCs are alive, attacking the Octopods. So the Octopods won't be able to deal a huge amount of damage. They will be... They will be harassed out of getting any damage done. So Electro, well done on stopping that harassment, but he's still going to have to deal with... He's going to have to deal with more units coming in, Faros, more Faros and Octopods coming in. These are not the ones that originally built, these are new ones that have just been built. So, right now, at the 9, see, the 940 mark... Okay, so in the present, Perlox has a great advantage right now. But that's because the ATHC destruction has not propagated through. These ATHCs will be able to destroy the Octopods, and from there they will be able to stop the damage. However, a Faropod coming in... A Faropod will be coming in around the... Let's see, around the 6 minute mark right now. 
So Electro sees the let's see the Yachtpods that come in before. I'm not sure where that Faropod is though. The Faropod, from the looks of the timeline, is around the blue time wave. Yes, on the blue time wave. So Electro does see that the Faropod's coming in. Electro's base has been destroyed by the far Corona Quarter Faropod at the 528 mark. A little bit later than most Corona Quarter Faropod rushes go, but still quite effective. So this is in the unplayable past, by the way. So there's nothing Electro can do about this. He can only watch, to figure out what's going on. And this Faropod is doing quite a lot of damage. So Electro does not have much to harass it with. He doesn't have any detection. He, I don't know if he was even expecting this, because, I, like I said, this is kind of an older strategy. I'm not sure how long Electro's been playing, but this is this is not something that comes up very often. There are very few players that actually even try to do this, and like I said, Overgrown Citadel is a map where it will work. A lot of the more recent maps, it is harder to make work. It requires a lot more... It requires a lot more misdirection with your units to actually... Because you can't do it just off the bat where you have a far apart at two minutes in. There's a lot more misdirection involved to make sure your opponent doesn't even know where your troops are until it's too late. In this case, though, it doesn't even matter the, the size of the main, the size of the main, the size of the base, the size of the map. It's too small for Perlox to really do anything about. Sorry, Perlox to avoid getting stopped for Electro to do anything about because Electro doesn't have any real means of attacking unless he all-out harasses or gets tornadoes early on, and he didn't do either of those, which means that I mean, he tried to harass but it got deflected pretty quickly. So as a result, it's very difficult for Electro to push this back, and it looks like Perlox is going to win this game. So Electro not realizing what, going, what was going on before, but I guess he definitely realizes it now. One ATC is however going through to the main base, it probably won't be able to do any damage. There are a couple of Faros there, and of course a bunch of other support units. So it will be detected and destroyed in no time at all. That is one dead ATHC. So yeah, the Faropod and Octopod doing, well, the Faropod doing a lot of damage, the Octopod doing nothing. The Octopod now, from Prolox's point of view, has moved forward to deal more damage to the RPs. And one ATHC for Electro, at least from Prolox's point of view, is still there, but Electro has already moved that ATHC. The ATHC right there is dead. And there is nothing that Electro can really do about this at this point. He actually is getting even more units, more Faros, and Octopod's coming in, Chronoport back to come in to destroy his base even harder. So that, that is tough. So there's a lot lot of damage going on and Electro is completely incapable of dealing with this he has no units left he's actually he's defeated actually so yeah that that is the game Electro really doesn't have any way out of this right now his only hope actually no he doesn't have a way out of this but he's not gonna be counted as dead yet because he does have a special ops just occupying in the bottom left corner I don't know because he's trying to grief Perlox by hiding a special ops a tiny little unit in the corner of the map yeah he is in fact griefing Perlox by Adding a special ops in the corner of the map. But that will likely be found in due time, because it's really nothing that nothing that Electro can do at this point. Special ops can't build, Marines can build. If he had saved a Marine, that would be actually really good, because he would allow him to rebuild, and Perlox would think he'd be dead, so if, and Electro has quite a few resources in the bank, so he'd actually be able to rebuild. But no. And the Farapod has found the special ops. Electro has has now lost. He is he has been destroyed. You can see he was defeated at the 1055 mark. So, yeah, Electro GG's, and that's the game. It was a short little game. Interesting showcase of how strategies are kind of map dependent, really, which is known, but it's good to show that it is, in fact, the case. There are a lot of strategies that will work better on smaller maps, strategies that will work better on larger maps. And that a lot of the, possibly a lot of the Command Report nerfs that were on smaller maps may have only been a small map thing, but that's a discussion for another day. Anyway, interestingly played out game and very interesting to watch. Just see, like I said, how much, how you need to really adapt to the map. Map size and the map, well, really the amount of resources in this map is pretty huge for its size, considering more recent maps, but anyway, very educational game, very informative game, and that is the game. Now, Electro and Pearl are just talking right now and other players actually officially surrendered. Oh, actually, that yeah, the chat does remind me of one thing: is that Electro is a bit of a newer player; he doesn't play as much as a lot of some of the other players. So Perlox is mentioning that how God, one of the well, another newer player, but he has been doing quite well recently. How God plays CISO, showing that maybe it's more a matter of how it was played out, and perhaps this Chrono Rush could have been avoided. Like I said, if with some detection, it would have been avoidable. Although the Octopods were more immediate threats, and also rushing it out. 
probably would have helped as well, but it would have been a bit tougher to do. But yeah, like I said, for, for CISO getting Tornads, getting Machinery, getting Tornads, Electro didn't even have any research, and he had the resources to get it. He easily had the resources to get it. So that is one thing that is more a matter of speed on the part of the CISO player, because Grekin doing this is not easy. It, it does take a fair amount of... Like, it's not a terribly difficult thing, but it's not trivial either. You have to pay attention to your timings and make sure you get all your research when you need it, when you actually when you actually need it. So it's not something that you can just fight off by just sitting and praying. You actually need to play at least as well. And like I said, for Electro, he could have gotten Machinery, he could have gotten Tornads in the amount of time that it took for the Fire Pod. Because that was a 5 minute Fire Pod that he could have had Tornads in by the 3 minute 30 mark. That would have been fairly easy to do. And like I said, sorry, Tornads for fighting the Fire Pods. Not so much for the Octopods, though it still would have helped because they are bombers. The Octopods are ground units that don't have very good anti-air attacks. Two or three Tornads would have really helped. And yeah, so like I said, it's, it is kind of a matter of playstyle. But on the map like this, it's kind of hard to expect a Farapod Chrono Rush. It's just, unless you are already aware that Farapod Chrono Rush is likely on a map like this. And it looks like... I'm not sure if Electra's going to surrender or if we're just going to wait until the time just runs out. I think he may be wasting time at this point. I'm not quite sure. But I will end this here because there's really nothing more to say. So I hope you enjoyed that and... Have a good night.